Okay, Jian says, what made you stick to Ichimoku but not other strategies or indicators? Um, there was a bit of a story about that, actually. Um, I tried so many indicators. When I was a newbie, when I was studying, I tried so many indicators on the internet. I was using the paid indicators. I spent so much time in research, so much money to, to uh, you know, uh, test many indicators. And I was basically hopping from indicators to indicators and the strategies to strategies. And it was not really successful because I kept, I kept changing my strategies. And also, I studied the price actions. I also bought some books and also some uh, yeah, PDFs about the price actions. And I was ex ex exclusively focusing on the price actions. And then, after I tried so many indicator strategies, they fell and I gave up. And back then, I knew about the Ichimoku, but I thought Ichimoku is a bit complicated and I didn't use Ichimoku back then. And it's actually true among the traders in Japan. You may think that the traders in Japan use Ichimoku, but it's actually not true. Most of the traders in Japan also think that the Ichimoku is a bit complex, so they prefer to use the moving averages or some of the Western indicators. And I was also the one. So I didn't use Ichimoku. But after losing all this time and money investing, and also I was losing on trades, some losing streaks, I deleted all the indicators and tried to see charts based on the pure price actions. Back then, I didn't even color the indicators. I was using all the white candlesticks on the chart without, no, without any indicators, without any colors on the, on the candlesticks. I was practicing and trading with my own um, strategies of candlesticks and other lines. And then, after a while, I applied Ichimoku and then Ichimoku made much more sense to me and ever since I've been using Ichimoku as my main strategy and then I started to read the original books and it made much more sense to me and I like about the psychology or the view perspective of the market that Ichimoku gives me and it, it really helped me in psychology and also what Goichi Hosta told me through the books were also very helpful because that was exactly what I was struggling the most. You can watch the video on my YouTube channel. I have, I made a Ichimoku series 1 to 5 and part 1 of the Ichimoku series I talk about a philosophy and the concept of the Ichimoku and I have introduced some of the philosophies that I liked the most based on what he said. So uh, it really helped me a lot to, to have a peace in mind in psychology in trades. So again, I didn't use Ichimoku from the beginning of my journey. I didn't like Ichimoku because I thought it's complex. Ichimoku is not even, you know, Ichimoku is complex because it had five lines. Sumo is shifted forward, Chikou span shifted backwards, and Tenkan and Kijun Sen are not even the moving averages. And, uh, you know, uh, I used also betrayed the Ichimoku. I used to change parameters. I was shifting Kumo to the current forming candlestick instead of shifting forward. And I was playing with the Chikou span also shifting 9 or 17, 26. Or 52 candles back and forth, Chikou span. And uh, yeah, but I think the best setup for the Chiku of the Ichimoku is the original setup. 926, 52, and 50, uh, 26 works the best. And then I created my own strategy, Ichimoku King Kohyo, in multiple time frames. And then Get the entries in the five minute 
and it started to work the best for me. So that was a little bit of my journey, how I picked the Ichimoku Kinko Hyo and create my own strategy. So I'm a Japanese and uh, I, 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 uh, I was born and raised in Japan. But even if I'm not Japanese, I will be using Ichimoku for sure. Yeah, I'm using not just because I'm Japanese. Yeah, even if I'm not Japanese, I'm sure I will like Ichimoku, the concept. Thank you for watching the video until the end. And before ending this video, I would like to add one more thing that is important in psychology. And this is my favorite. And the proverb is never try to get a head and tail the fish and only get the body part of the fish because that's where the juice is. And what this really means is that sometimes you may try to capture the pips from the beginning until the end of the trend. And but you have to remember that that is impossible to get all the pips from the beginning until the end. You can only get the body part because that's where the juice is. And that's why whenever you see trends, you better think where is the head and where is the tail of the big fish of the trend and only try to get the body part. So that means uh, you can, after you confirm the trend happening, you enter the market, but that will be too early. You have to confirm the trend, continuous trend, uptrend or downtrend, but never try to get the beginning of the trends. Also, whenever the market goes flat in sideways after the big trends, you never exit just because the market retraces. That retracement might still be up temporary and the market may go up continuously. But sometimes the market goes backwards heavy and maybe reverse end wave, maybe some kind of reverse confirmations and the market starts to go down continuously. Then you exit there with some profit. So never try to get the head and tail of the fish is actually that is very important. And my strategy is built in this way. So hopefully you stick to this idea and become a successful trend follower. So until I see you on the next one, please stay healthy and stay safe and stay gold. All right, bye for now. Matane. Thank you.